Hello, hello. Well, it's time to take the pumpkin pies out of the oven. But I have to swing for a minute because my back's... But the thing is ringing away. The edges got a little bit burned. I don't know about this 425 thing for the pumpkin pie. I don't think that's what it said on the, on the cans. So I think it was a bit too, um, a, a bit too long, a bit too hot. So anyway, let's look at it. So, hi there, Crazy Chris. So the edge of this got burned, and this isn't very good, but inside I think it'll all be fine. Now when you take it out of the oven, you're supposed to insert a knife, and if the knife comes out clean, it's done. So maybe it needed a little longer, but whatever. Stop. Okay. Oh, you used to watch those soap making videos. Oh, how cool. That's neat. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? I stopped making it and still have leftover soap. All right, we got to take this other one out. So let's look at that. Oh, this was the apple pie. Isn't that awesome? Low battery. Why does it keep saying things like that? So you can see that it's burning around the edge there. So let's see if this is ready. My, it's brighter in the camera. So we supposed to stick this in, but look, it's not nearly ready. So what is to be done? I think I should put a little bit of aluminum foil around the edge. That's going to be pretty inedible. This is a pretty deep pie. Um, I used this kind of pumpkin, which has got a lot more liquid in it. And I didn't, I didn't figure that out ahead of time. Shall we eat some of this? Or should we put aluminum foil around things? All right, we'll do the aluminum thing. Let's get some aluminum foil out. Wait, it's in this thing. newspapers when you want to tear a newspaper one direction it will tear perfectly in straight lines and the other direction it will go all over the place so I'll make a little a little rim to put around the edge that's not going to be right that's going to be too wide Half of it's ready. I can't do this and show you it in the oven at the same time. Now I wanted to check this and what did that say about the time? So you have to take this label off to see the back. I didn't make it from this, of course, I told you that already. Hey, there it is. Ha! Bake at 425 for a bit, then at 375 for 35 to 45 minutes. Well, serves a preparation time 35 minutes, baking time 50 to 60 minutes. So I guess I should put the oven back on, bake, and I'll put it at, I'm going to put it at 350, and I'm going to put it in for, I don't know, 10 more minutes. Actually, it probably needs about 15 more minutes, so we'll just put it in for a while. There we go. So the purpose of this video was to show you how awesome these pies are. So let's just cut it. This is made with a, a, 
a Halloween pumpkin that was not cut open. I was thinking about all my imperfectness about this, and if you want to make a perfect pie, I do have other pie crust recipes that they turned out better, but this is without gluten. So I'll get another plate. Now look, we have dishes again. Not dishes. But those will be here when I come back. They'll be here for days, actually. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that. Say that out loud. Now, there was a kind of funny scoop here I had. I think I used it for something else, and so now it's in here. That would be really good to use. But not to clean. Yeah. We'll try something else. Let's use a, a fat knife. This is not going to work. All right, we'll turn you around and we'll stick you on there. Oops. Put you on there because you're magnetic. I'll put you down there so you can kind of get an idea of how big a mess I'm in. The apple pie was yummy. I had some. Willem is not home, so he didn't have any. You have to be home to have pie. That's all there is to it. All right, so we'll take this funny shaped thing and try and use this. Hey, it's not all falling completely apart. Except that it's going to be too big, which is going to wreck everything else. Come on now. So there it is. Steaming hot. Well, shall we go outside? Oh, I was sitting outside and it got kind of cold. There's a million stars out tonight. It's so pretty. But I have a wood stove inside. I could sit in the front of the wood stove. But now you're with me. Mm. So let's look at it again. Do you want a bite? That's not bad. Let's see what it tastes like. It's got coconut milk in it. Turn you around. Come on, turn around. It's really good. It's quite sweet. I don't think I needed all that xylitol in there. It's kind of like custard more than humble pie, pumpkin pie. can see it's kind of got that custardy. I'm getting stuff on the camera. It's really good. I've never I've never made pumpkin pie like this. And let's check this crust. Even though the crust is a little bit burned. Let's just check it out. It completely falls apart in your mouth. And it's good. It doesn't taste burned at all. Isn't this lovely? Thank you for coming along and having pie with me. My fruit of my hands. That's nice. Mm-hmm. I would never have made this if you guys didn't ask. Okay, too much to the top. I'm not used to sweets anymore. A little bit of sweets, but this is too sugary. I put three quarters of a cup of dilatol. A little pie in the big pie. So I shouldn't have used so much liquid. Hi, Jack. Nice to see you. We've been making pies today. They're on the previous videos. I don't know if they're all live yet or up there yet, but it was apple pie. Why is it making that sound? Okay, it's eight o'clock. I'm not just gonna go jump up every time it buzzes. I think something went wrong, but it's not ready yet. 
Oh, hello, Sean. My brownie video in 2008. Wow. 2008 doesn't sound very long to me. Ten years goes by on a flash. Used to be that a day took a long time. when, But then when I started having kids, days were really quick. Now, weeks are like days. Months are like weeks. That is the resident cardinal. He lives in my clock. That is very nice. Not very entertaining, I suppose, but... Here's this picture. Come on, let's get that right. This is the last piece. Look at that. Oops. Oopsie. Got a little bit on my camera. Well, I think it was a I think it was successful. But the crust is burning on the other one, so I put aluminum foil on it. It's supposed to be 425 at the bidding and then 375 for about an hour. 50 minutes to an hour. So, <clears throat> I think that was worth it. I think it was pretty good, do you? It tastes good. And it didn't have any gluten or milk in it. You know, I haven't made pies or cookies or cakes or anything because I couldn't. So my pie crust, that's on two videos ago or the last video, but. So I used two cups of this one. It was two cups of oat, oatmeal that was ground up into flour. And then a cup of butter um, cut into it. So it's like peas. And then you put a little bit of um, ice water. But I put egg with with water and a little bit of vinegar and then you pour it into the your flour butter mixture and you you flip it with a fork a lot while you're adding the water and as soon as it looks like it it's starting to clump together in in semi small balls you know like once they're getting to, then you gather it all up and you do that thank you kitten well, I've been making more cooking videos. I've been using my Instant Pot and showing you, and now I made an apple pie and two pumpkin pies. The center of my back is killing me. I can't, I can't do that all very long. Anyway, I did it, though. I usually don't have any energy. Look at that. It's dark outside. I went out to put the lights up, the Christmas lights up, but it was so cold. But not out that direction. That direction... The front door. Oh, it's very. That was okay. And the stars. There's so many stars. Every star is out tonight. Every single one. It's 1 a.m. over there. So you must be where? 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. So you're in England? Any special foods for the holidays? Yes, like Christmas. I, I make Christmas stolen which is kind of like bread with fruit in it. It's more like a fruit bread, like a fruit cake. I love stargazing. You know, if you take an app, these apps are great, but I had a book years ago and I'd have to shine the flashlight on it, but that messes up your eyes for a while. But now you have these apps and you can just put them up and it'll show you what stars you're looking at. And you put it down and you can see what stars you're looking at through the earth, which you're not looking at. But I live out here where they have dark sky, dark sky preserves. So like you're driving down the road and they have this big area you pull off and park and people can look at the stars. Of course I've seen shooting stars. Have you? Shooting stars are great. I saw a big one lately. It was really big and I thought it must have landed like near Ottawa or something. But I, I mentioned it on the weather the guy's Twitter, I said, I saw a shooting star. Um, I didn't catch it, though. 
where does anybody know about the shooting star the other day? I saw it, but I didn't catch it. You know the song, Catch a Shooting Star and Put It in Your Pocket, Never Let It Go Again. I think it would burn a hole in your pocket. But anyway, out here where the sky is so dark, you can look up and you can see Sirius. That's in the the left foot of of Orion. And Orion is aiming his arrow at Taurus, which is a, a V-shaped, which is the it's the antlers on the on the bull. And then there's the seven sisters, a little clump. And then up at the top, there's Antares or Arcturus. And then down under the horizon is Antares. And and Vega is the constellation. I think what is the star in Vega? Is it Antares? Antares, isn't that the the two animals pulling like there's an arch which is the which is the what's being pulled and then um scorpio is down on the horizon too but you know the the uh elliptic which is the line that goes all the way around the earth and all the stars follow this and so at the in the winter you always see orion in the evening and then you see um, the Big Dipper, it'll be upside down like a question mark. Uh-oh, i got to plug you up. But that's okay because I'm sitting in my chair. Willem is away, so it's nice to visit with y'all. Very nice. Look at that. Eleven people. This kind of makes me embarrassed. Eleven people are watching me? Uh-oh, it better be nice. I better say the right things. What if they reject me? Oh, well, just don't have to look. I'll never know. Actually, there's no thumbs downs anymore, which is really nice. I had some trolls at some point that were giving me thumbs downs. It was kind of, it was kind of disheartening, you know. Anyway, so I'm waiting for the other pie to be done soon. But this crust is not good. The crust is going to be burned. The, it was too deep and too much liquid in it. So it's, hi, Uma. Oh, no one would ever reject you. Thank you. Well, you don't know completely all of me. <laughs> I'm kind of different. And and when people are different, it makes other people uncomfortable. I don't have a I don't have a facade, you know, I don't have to have everything perfect and so I'm just me and there's people out there that would never start a video without being all prepared for it or have their house not perfectly clean or certainly not video their house when it wasn't perfectly clean. But I don't go with all those rules. The great they who makes all the rules can't, can't, can't bug me. <laughs> no, this is what it is. You get what you, what did you see? What did it, you see what you get? No, you get what you see. What it is. How's that go? What you see is what you get. That's it. Yep. So tonight was the Christmas train. In Canada, there's this Christmas train that makes its way across some area. I don't know, but it, it was supposed to come through nearby recently, and I didn't see it. I've never seen, I've never seen the Christmas train. We say, your differences make you genuine and fabulous. You know, that's the good thing about YouTube is the people that want somebody like me come, and they're the people that watch. And they're all nice, and they're all friendly, and they all say nice things about me, which is so good. And the people that don't like the stuff, in fact, if they come and they say a bad comment that, you know, like, you took so long to, you know, why didn't you have everything organized? And, and I, I commented back that, well, now you know to never watch my videos again. Just make a note of it, and you'll be safe. That's well, good. I think that's perfect because I don't want people to be here that don't want to be here, right? I know some people listen to my videos to fall asleep. <laughs> I can put you to sleep in 10 seconds. <laughs> anyway, I was going to say that the stars were so bright tonight. When I first went out, I could just see the bright ones. And then I went and sat there for a while. I have a porch swing in my sun trap. And there's no wind in that area. It's It's got 
you know, walls on two sides of it. And although it faces the wind, it doesn't, it's not bad. And um, after sitting there for a while, then I started to see all the other stars, all the rest of the constellations started to appear. Yeah, yeah, I have these friends in Maine that watch me to fall asleep. She just loves me. She told everybody about me, and so they can all fall asleep. Hey, eight people and only three thumbs up. <gasps> Slackers. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Anyway, and so the little stars were showing up. And then I got in a different position. I could see the whole Milky Way. Thank you. Very soothing voice. I like to watch your videos during the evening after lectures. It helps me relax. So are you a professor? Are you lecturing? Or are you just telling your children what's up? Oh, Mom, don't lecture me. I've had enough. Not again. I've heard it all. But, but you just have to remember that da 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 They have, it used to go in one ear and out the other. Oh, you're a student. Okay. I was a student. I have a BAA, which is a BA almost. I lack two courses. I went to university off and on for six years, and I still lack two courses, but it's anything over the 100 level. And so in Canada, I think that you can, you can go to university for free after you're 65. Yay, and now I'm 66. Yes! So maybe I'll go back and I have to do it online because I can't go to the University of Waterloo because that's way far away, down in Kitchener, Waterloo. But I could take it, you know, like correspondence course. I'm thinking of doing that. But I want to make sure I take something I'm not going to fail. But, you know, by my age, you got a lot of life experience. And so when they're talking about any subject, you've got a lot more knowledge about that subject than the other kids in the class just by the fact that you lived longer and had more experiences. I was a psych major. You know, my favorite psych class was social psychology. That was the best. I would like to take more social psych classes. That would be nice. I wish, wonder if I could do that. Anyway, I need to take something that I won't fail at because, you know, I might not feel like studying. What if I don't want to do it after I start? I study and I'm really gung-ho for a few days. And then feel like it. I want to do something else. I want to make a basket or, you know, and get into something else, anything else. And then there I go. Ah, history. Yes. History would be interesting, wouldn't it? I have had many different kinds of history classes. When my kids were in grade seven, they both dropped out of school because it was in French. And so I taught them in English. And um, they were in French immersion. They only stayed out for a year. But the book, the textbook that they had at school is the one I, the one I got. And so astrophysics sounds good. So um, I got the textbook, and both of them said, because it was English, they felt that it was cheating. But I just couldn't see how you could learn geography in French, because all the terms that you learn in geography, you're only going to know the French words for. And we don't live in a French society. It's English here. And so television is in English and books are in English. And so you start reading things and you're not going to know what any of that is. It's all in French to you. Anyway, but they felt like they were cheating because I was teaching them in English. So that was the, study, the history of Canada. So I do know the history of Canada. I never learned it in the United States. They didn't teach us anything about anywhere except the United States. But here... Anyway, so I learned about the history of Canada. And then I've been watching Murdoch Mysteries. And Murdoch, everything went on in the 1900s, you know, and this was the Industrial Revolution was going on and all these things were being invented and Henry Ford had just invented the car and, you know, Madame Curie had just f discovered... Oh, did she discover... 
Well, she discovered something. Uranium? No. Madame Curie. Curie. Whatever. Anyway, and Edison. Oh, radiation. Yes, thank you. I was thinking uranium, but I didn't think that was right. Yeah, and so they were, there's all these um, different inventions going on. And then I was looking in my cupboards, in my bookcases one night, and thought, do I want these books? Let me look at this book. And sometimes I get books at the dump that look really good, the Reuse Center. Everything's free there. And so I brought this one home, and it was Inventions of, in Canada, Canadian Inventions. And, and it, was, it was so interesting because, you know, Alexander Graham Bell, he lived in Canada and he lived in the United States. And so both of them claim that he was there when they, he invented the, the phone. Anyway, so um, he was in the movie, you know, in Murdoch Mysteries. Anyway, that was very interesting. And so it helped me to know who. Bell was, was Scottish. Is that right? There were a lot of, you know, like Canada is full of people from Britain back in the day, like it was Queen Victoria, and then this was a British colony. And the French, the French had it for a while. Every time there's a war in Europe, the winner would get the colonies. So it was it went from France to England, France to England. So the French had it for a while, which is why Quebec is still French. Yes, Quebec. French had Quebec. That's right. And they still do. Well, they don't, but a lot of people in Quebec are, are French speaking and they would like to separate. But Montreal has a lot of English speaking and, you know, the natives, there's French up in pockets in the rural areas. And, and even on the Ontario side, there's a lot of French communities. Anyway, I wonder if they ever will separate. But you see, if they separate, then they have to take part of the debt. And I don't think anybody wants to do something like that. But there's this thing that happens. Everybody pays in, and then it gets divided up to all the provinces. And so the have-not provinces are benefited from Quebec and Ontario. There's all kinds of injustices that happen in Canada. The natives should mention here, I was watching Vancouver News, and every time these these politicians get on to talk about this disaster that's happening up there right now, or over there right now, and they say, we are on the la native lands of, and then they'll list the tribes who used to own the land, or maybe it's part of the reserve or whatever. People keep taking their land. Like, if that was happening to us, we would not stand for it. Like, get a life. But they, you can do it to them because they're different. We can do what we want and we're whatever. Yeah, Canada is, a lot of Canadians are British. But Canada has a huge immigration policy. And so we have people from everywhere in the whole world. So you go in, in Ottawa and you'll see, you'll hear people speaking many different languages. There's Urdu and... Well, India has so many languages, and so there's a lot of people from India and a lot of people from Africa and people from Mexico and Jamaica and all those Arab nations and Russia and Scandinavia and different parts of Europe, lots of Germans and Swiss, and my husband's Dutch. It's a real melting pot here, and but it's not... It's not People do not want everybody else to be the same. And so it's multiculturalism. So we accept that each other have their own different, their own religions, their own cultures. And so when people come to Canada, they usually want to settle where their people are. Like if you go to Brampton, a lot of people in Brampton are from India. And there's a lot of people from Somalia in Ottawa now. People say Ottawa is the capital of Somalia. But so people like to go where they have their culture is the same of other with other people. And and people accept that. People are it's okay, it's good, you know? But in the beginning it was all a lot of white Britain, white English speaking people, and then the French. The French were always there. 
That's because opening. something's going wrong. I better end it. I don't know what's wrong. Anyway, it was nice chatting with you. I suppose I should go check that pie again since it did beep a bunch. I wonder if this is running out of battery. If it dies, it's no, nothing you did. It's that, um, let's look at it. Let's pull it out and have a good look. One day I'm going to vacuum out those popcorns too. All right, there's a bit of a jiggle to it. Let's get a clean knife. Knife, I call it. Well, it's better than it was, isn't it? It's getting there. But it's too deep. But I'm going to turn it off anyway because you saw how great this one was and you know how yummy it was too. And if you didn't notice that apple pie, this was made with dehydrated apples. And let me show you the dehydrated apples. Where did I put them? Ah, I put them in the drawer because I didn't know what else to do with them. Everything else was full. Well, now I have to put you down. But if you die, it's not my my intention. Okay, you can go there, and I will show you dehydrated apples. So they look like potato chips because they're pretty thin sliced. See? And what you do, you put them in water and they reconstitute. But these don't have sulfur on them and you can just break them up and you have little pieces. And they're so good. Oh my gosh, they're so yummy. Want some? Take what you want. Go ahead. There's more. I didn't take any. Well, whatever. Anyway, so I put them in water. And then when I cooked them, they turned out like that. That's got some crust on it. See? But I don't use the kind that you get from good night Jack have fun studying I'll think about you while I'm not taking courses another bug all these mealy bugs all these fruit flies or flies that come in anyway you have to be careful eating dehydrated stuff because they reconstitute in your stomach and then you get dried out but anyway it turned out pretty good isn't it Look at that. That's a shadow. I used to make amazing pies. They're not amazing anymore. I guess I have to turn this on. There. Now it'll tell me in 15 minutes. But I'm going to go now. Because I should probably do something else. But I don't know what's more important than talking. Good night, Sean. Good night, good night. 20 after 8 here. So I see you all. Thank you for coming and thanks for all your thumbs ups. And if you want to watch more of these, you should subscribe so you won't forget where you found them. Good night, kitten. Love you guys. You guys mean so much to me. Thank you for all your comments. And if you try this at home, let me know. And definitely will turn out different because I can't be replicated. <laughs> How do you replicate imperfection? All right. See you later. Remember, you saw it here last and you can do this at home and results may differ. <laughs> Good night, Nan. Good night, everybody. Good night.